This is, the, this is the Godfather Minute. Godfather Minute, what? I'm Alex Robinson. And I'm Andy Robinson. And we are the Godfather, Godfather Minute, Minute co-hosts. <laughs> this is the um, exclusive podcast for going through the movie The Godfather by Francis Ford Coppola one minute at a time. Mm-hmm. What minute What minute are we on, Alex? We are up to minute five. Five minutes. So if you recall a few minutes ago, well, days ago, but minutes ago, I promised that I would work on my Italian. Uh-huh. So uh, this will be the Cinco Minute. Cinco. I think it's Cinco. Cinco? Like cin- Oh, I'm sorry. Cinque. Cinque. That's five. Cinque. I think it's uno, due. I think it's cinque. All right. Well, any of you I'm who speak I, Italian, call in. Yeah. Call the hotline. Let yeah. us know how we're doing. Um, yeah, we were discussing minute five of The Godfather. And uh, it starts off with The Undertaker... Mona Sara whispering in the ear of the titular godfather. Mm. Now, in the movie, you can't tell what he's saying. Mm-mm. You hear whispering, and it's really close to the camera. We still haven't seen the godfather's face. Right. Does it say in the book? Because um, I have in the script, they have him, what he does say to them. Mm, no. Yeah, I don't think in the book they, at that point... It's a little different. It's, yeah. yeah, but the but the author does point out this is really cool. I hadn't I hadn't thought about this before that that Bonacera leans down and whispers into the Godfather, much like a parishioner whispers to a priest oh, in a, a confession. A confession. Mm, interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, in the script, he says, "I want them dead." Really? Yeah, that's what it says in the script. So wow. I'm guessing that's what he was mouthing, but they yeah. just erased it or whatever. I wonder why they did that. Hmm. Why they didn't just have him? Uh, why he didn't have him say, "I want them dead," and have it be audible? Mm. I guess it's implied, maybe. Yeah. Well, and there's a certain amount of yeah. drama effect. Yeah. If you if you just don't hear, holding back is, yeah. is sometimes a good thing. Um, I, this is gonna sound weird, but uh, I think I just thought of it with that guy leaning in so close mm-hmm. to the Godfather. I bet the Godfather smells pretty good. Really? What makes you think that? Well, this is, first of all, he's wearing a tuxedo, uh-huh. and he seems like someone who's really into his personal grooming and stuff. So to me, it seems like he would smell like a, like an Old Spice kind of, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, kind of. I could see that old I mean, man kind of perfume, yeah, you know, yeah, cologne, yeah. a mature odor. Yeah, a mature, <laughs> well dressed. It's his wedding. It's his daughter's yeah, wedding day, yeah. and so he's he's yeah. prepared. Um, and then it um. The camera reverses, and we finally see finally the iconic face of Marlon Brando is the Godfather. (laughs) 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 I was like, "Oh, I thought it was going to be a Mickey Rooney." Speaking of speaking of the disappointing trombone, who would you be most disappointed to see uh, in that role when that camera turned and you saw the face? Now, does it have to be period? No, like anyone, anyone, anyone. Um, the most disappointed. It's tough. Do you go for <laughs> someone yeah. totally? Do you say like Jar Jar Binks and go totally no like CGI? Oh, sorry. Uh, human, real actor or actress. Uh, do you go like this? Do you go like Carrot Top? <laughs> well, the thing is, I feel like if you picked someone who, if you picked comedy, you just have to commit, and that that wouldn't be the worst thing. Like, now it's going to be a comedy, and I'm going to have a good time with it. Yeah, that's what I mean by having someone so outrageously wrong. It really just changes the yeah. tone of it. Or do you, is it just someone boring, like you know, like uh, John Ritter? Or not that John Ritter is boring, but he no, wouldn't. He's yeah. not like it's not he's a not, stretch. You know, it's not as or yeah. like uh, you know. Uh, I'm trying to think of another kind of just, middle of the road yeah, kind of actor like, uh, that's. Uh, like Bill Paxton. Yeah, or Bill Pullman. <laughs> Big Pullman. Is, is that Bill Paxton? Is that a guy? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. lost him, unfortunately. Oh, okay. But, uh, so, like, Bill Pullman. Yeah. That would be disappointing. Or, But, it, it would be, you know, I'd take it back. It had to be someone who could who could look the part, but just a terrible actor. That would be the most disappointing. Because, like, I think if you pick someone funny, like, 
Pauly Shore, because he is so funny, it would immediately turn. <laughs> He's not funny, but it would be so outrageous. So you're saying it would be someone like... Uh, Who's a terrible actor? Because we don't know any of these like, people. Like Frank Stallone or somebody who's not like known yes. as an actor. Yeah. Or like... Uh, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone would be pretty disappointing. Didn't he play... Apollo Creed. Apollo? Oh, I yeah. think he got, it's the other be good, I think, yeah. actually, to have uh, Carl Weathers. change the feel of Carl Weathers. Oh, totally, yeah. yeah. Well, anyone's going to totally change the he feel. He starts talking smack to Buena Sarah. <laughs> You're a fool. Oh, that's Mr. T. He's wearing a big uh, Uncle Sam uh, <laughs> yeah. top hat. <laughs> What about Mr. T? See, that's that's going more into yeah, the comedy. Is. End that's of outrageous. Things. Yeah, uh, that is truly outrageous. Hmm. Um, if we pick a little kid like <laughs> Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> the first shots, the Home Alone, his hands on his face. <laughs> yeah, Suspended say, sentence. Oh. What, would say, what would you have me do? And he whispers in his ear, "I want them dead." And then he puts his hands on his side. <laughs> <of> his <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, have you heard any of the other people? Uh, I mentioned Mickey Rooney. I know Mickey Rooney was one of the people who really? was, cons- was seriously considered for the mm, role no, of the Godfather. Wow. No, no. And uh, I think maybe Ernest Borgnine. I'll look into it for future episodes. Wow. But uh, It's hard to imagine anyone else in that role. Yeah, oh, yeah. now it is, yeah. yeah. Or it, going back to who would be the most outrageous, what if it were like, like Bonacera? Oh, yeah, so so funny weird. Me, I was going to say that. It's like his twin brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and one of the—he tw- doesn't have a mustache. <laughs> yeah. He's not wearing black. One of yeah. the one of the twins yeah. bought into the American system. The other went yeah. completely organized crime. That would be a true story about family and power. Yeah, or Bonacera's brother became a uh, OBGYN, like a baby delivery doctor, because like Bonacera is a funeral guy, oh, yeah. and he's the one who's bringing <laughs> babies into the world. Yeah. So they uh, that's a circle of life kind of. A thing. Speaking of which, and in the end, they blend together into one oh. person. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Speaking of which, I do find it interesting that Mm -hmm. a mortician, who is someone who shepherds people into the world of death or those around the the Mm -hmm. person who's died, is asking someone to commit murder. Mm. Is he just trying to drum up business for himself? Oh, that's a that's a real (laughs) big risk. All these years, he's bought into the system, but he's at such a new low. Yeah, because what you don't he made say- up this whole story about his daughter because he just wants two extra two extra bodies. Well, in one it's of the, two guys, right? It's two guys, two yeah. guys. Yeah. Well, in one of the deleted scenes, which Coppola cut out, you see Bonacera at another crime family's wedding, and yeah. he's asking, like, uh, he's asking t- Tatalia, he's asking the head of the Tatalia family to kill another guy. I mean, he's just desperate for business. They can't be on the same day, though. That would be a blunder in scheduling. Oh, oh yeah, to have like two big mob weddings in the same day. That would probably be. It'd be disrespectful, I think, to the other families because they are invited. Well, that's the question. Right? Is so say uh, say Tatalia had his wedding, his his daughter's wedding, all set up, and then Bronwyn Blanda was like, "Oh, that'd be the perfect weekend to do it. Let's do it that weekend." Oh, would no. would the other guy have to back down? Oh boy! Or would that I mean, basically there are five they families? Go the, they go to the mattresses over this. Are the mattresses, or would they have to have one of those? Conventions where they all get together, you know, every oh, now like and a day. wedding planning, <laughs> like a or what you know, the the where the families get together, it's like and talk a summit, business. yeah, a summit, yeah, yeah, a turf summit, yeah. Oh, that'd be terrible, like you imagine. <laughs> After all, they're not communists. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Marlon Brando, and uh, obviously, we're big fans of the mm-hmm, brand, mm-hmm. so we call them the brand. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I, you know, I. I just sorry to interrupt. I, I there was something I cool. Thought you said, I said we call him the brand, and you went, "Oh, oh, that's a great idea." <laughs> the brand. brand. Oh, <laughs> Home Alone face. <laughs> Macaulay Culkin. You know he can play the Godfather. Is home Alone. <laughs> is he can play the guy? He can play one of the Godfathers in uh, Home in Godfather Four that we are going to live serial. Live Remember? serial. I think so. Well, we'll wow. do all the voices. All right, yeah. fair enough. Maybe maybe there's a place for Macaulay Culkin. No, it's just kid Macaulay Culkin because he's like 50 years old now. Well, and that's why he'll be a good crime boss. Oh no, I thought you wanted him as a kid Macaulay Culkin. Oh yeah, I don't think that'll work. But isn't he one of those kids that never really ages? He ages, but he always looks the same. Well, he's one of those child actors who aged and looks. He he looked cuter as a kid than he does handsome oh. as an adult. I don't want to say he's bad looking or anything like that because you know we're all just trying yeah. to get by in the world. But uh, are there yeah. any child actors that look better as adults? 
there are some that still look good. Well, obviously, I think Jodie Foster is kind of the gold standard for mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. child actor who yeah. who became successful as a uh, as an adult. Mm-hmm. There's a handful of others. Are any of them that, that look better though? Like, wow, as a kid, do you? you... You I'm were sure okay, that but I'm, now you're looking great. Probably not big stars, yeah. but probably like a kid who was in like you know as yeah. an extra and something. Yeah, you know something. That's true. Hasn't yeah. hadn't developed yet. Yeah. So and what? Kurt I, Russell maybe. Kurt Russell was a child. Was he a child? Actor? Yeah, he was, was a child. He, he was in a bunch of Disney uh, movies oh, and stuff. Huh. You know, he was originally, or he did he audition for the Han Solo part? He did audition. There's, there's wow. footage of him auditioning for yeah. the Han Solo. With, did he have an eye patch and everything? <laughs> like an no. Escape from New York. Him and the greatest American hero was what? auditioned to play Luke. Oh, my gosh. And uh, another actress auditioned to play uh, Princess Leia. And I was thinking it would be awesome if the three of those three actors got together and basically oh, played, yeah. did like a sequel to Star Wars. Oh, that'd be great. characters <laughs> like that. <laughs> that'd be awesome. It'd be such a deep cut, like, nerd yeah. uh, thing. So uh, I think when, when the greatest American hero actor realized that he didn't get the part and then he saw Star Wars become this huge, yeah. huge franchise, you know what he told his agent. What do you say? He said, look at what's happened to me. <laughs> Believe it or not. (laughs) (laughs) So I read that, interestingly, on the day that Francis Ford Coppola, the director of The Godfathers, first even heard of The Godfather, he was looking through, I think it was the New York Times, and he saw a little ad for the book. Mm -hmm. It was out and it was hot. And on that very same day that he saw that, he received a call from who? Marlon Brando. Brando. Say with me. Marlon, Marlon Brando. Brando. Unrelated to The Godfather because he was, Francis Ford Coppola was, was in the works of making another movie and and he had sent the script, I think, to Marlon Brando and Marlon Brando was calling him at that moment to tell him he was not going to accept the, pic, the mm. role in the picture. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. And there's another crazy coincidence. On that same day, Coppola received a social call by two people, some suits, some Hollywood suits, uh, unrelated to The Godfather. Or but, Marlon Brando. Or Marlon Brando. And they came over and they talked about some business-related stuff. But those guys, or at least one of them, would be involved in the making of The Godfather later. So on that same day, you had wow. Coppola learn about this book, The Godfather, Brando, and then someone from Paramount, I think. Wow. Do you think yeah. anything like that has ever happened in your lo- in your own life where you're and like, I just oh don't my know God, about that. it? I mean, for all we know, this could be, you know, it could be like, oh, the day we started the Godfather podcast is the oh, day. All these other things you know, are happening. Like, oh, yeah. boy. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I yeah. Guess. I can't think of anything so far where I'm like, the same day I, you know. Anyway. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Yeah. We'll talk, I'm sure we'll talk more about Coppola. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Very yeah. interesting We got story. a lot of minutes to get through, so we. Uh, oh, yeah. Can't, can't uh... mm-hmm. so Marlon Brando. Um, he says, um, I want them dead, and then it cuts to Marlon Brando, and he's saying, Like, I cannot do because, uh, does he go into the whole explanation in this minute? I think it's just the beginning of his. Explanation, oh, yeah, right? yeah, he doesn't go into, yeah, no, details. you're right, actually, he doesn't, um, Bonacera Sarah pretty much tells him he, I, he mostly, he. Do, the the Don goes back to discussing about why he didn't come to him first, yes, basically. That's right. Um so and during the scene, Marlon Brando has a cat in his lap. Yes. I was gonna bring up the cat. And uh do you, I have some information about the cat. Do you uh, I have I have a little bit, but you go first. You probably got more. Um just uh not too much. Um the cat was one of a bunch of cats that lived at the movie studio. Hmm, interesting. And um Francis Ford Coppola like picked it up and basically put it in Marlon Brando's lap mm-hmm. and because it's it's apparently Marlon Brando was uh, somewhat difficult as an actor sometimes and mm-hmm. Coppola noticed that he um, Marlon Brando would be more engaged if he had some bit of business to do mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. like by putting the cat in his lap it kind of gave him something to focus on and and, and, and so on so uh, and I read in the the annotated screenplay they say the cat is also symbolizes that it, he's gentle but with hidden claws yes <laughs> definitely <laughs> yeah so um, yeah, and apparently Coppola also got along it didn't he got along with Brando but they didn't do a lot of talking when it came to directing mm-hmm. and yeah. so he would frequently just give him props and things to like point and would yeah. not use words so much as objects yeah. and body language uh, well, I guess I'm sure you've heard that Marlon Brando never memorized any of his lines, yeah. and he would have like uh, 
the actors holding cue cards and stuff or yeah. like uh i think later on he had an earpiece oh really he had, he had like feed a, him the lines yeah or someone would off stage would be mm. like you know every time i'm out they pull me back in and yeah. he, would, he would repeat the line but uh so speaking of which the cat dra- apparently the cat's purr was so loud he was marlon brando was so good at petting this cat that its purr was so loud that uh much of the dialogue had to be dubbed in oh afterwards because I guess the cat was like <laughs> Marlon Brando. You do Marlon Brando, I'll be the cat. So people can. Well, why didn't you come to me first? I, I told you you should come to me first. I can hear a thing. The, the cat's purse is uh, drowning out my earpiece. It's all it's your like, interference. It's final tap. You're <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Nine or four or <laughs> Did you have any other stuff about the cat? That was all the information no, no, I had about No, just it. Him. Just about, about his cat. directing him. Nope. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the Don goes back to talking about why he didn't come to him why first. Why didn't you come to me? Yeah. Well, what have I ever done? Mm-hmm. And uh, he says, uh, I can't remember the last time you invited me to your house for a cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. And, uh, or, you know, you never come to me for advice. Or, and I was like, he must be even the only person who is like... Oh, I wish more people were bothering me and pestering me to do favors for them. <laughs> you're right. Well, it was a different time. Yeah, it's a so, very different time. Well, I guess if you're the Godfather, that's kind of your uh, that's kind of your bread and butter. You that's like true. if people stop coming, you're yeah, like, well, wait, a minute, why is no one coming to me for advice? So, uh, but uh, but he seems genuinely like hurt that he didn't that he didn't come to him. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I think I think there really is a difference in that generation. I know I worked my first job as a teacher. The the people older than me working there uh, they they really valued when people would come by and talk and my old boss would always want us to come by and say hello in the mm-hmm. morning and like well, it's also uh, yeah as a sign of respect it makes the person feel like they're useful and mm-hmm. they're like oh see i'm an important figure people are yeah. people want my advice because yeah. i'm i'm a, no one is a smart person um so here's well, something well, i think i think don corleone also had heard that bonacera's wife made the best coffee so he really wanted to get over there to <laughs> to try some of that coffee. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, and he even says, "You never, you never wanted my friendship." He's like, "Oh, like, <laughs> well, I could, we're gonna play cards together." Uh, Don Corleone, I'm running a mortician's business. I don't have time to go and hang around like you. <laughs> Women and children, they can ask for friendship. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so here's something I realized listening to this, and when you do it a minute at a time, you just slow things down. You can kind of mm-hmm. notice stuff. Uh, the Vito Corleone points out that his wife, uh, Conchetta Corleone, is the godmother to the woman mm-hmm. who the girl who was attacked. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it makes me wonder: did they? Like, did did Marlon Brando and his wife know about? It? Were they like, "Oh my God, did you hear the?" That uh, Darlene mm-hmm. got attacked by a bunch of animals. I don't think there's any indication in the book that that they knew about it ahead of time, but they must have found out. I mean, that's that's the kind of thing that travels fast, especially if there's a family connection. A godmother, that's a that's what I that's mean, an like, religious relationship. Yeah, that's very important to the Italian people. Yeah. So, but it also makes me wonder: what did they? If so, assuming he did hear it, mm-hmm. and it's his goddaughter-in-law, it seems like that alone would be enough to warrant intervention by the dom yeah, he, that he wouldn't have to wait for Buenos Aires to come to him yeah to like, him, like that would alone be an insult and, and an important thing yeah. that, uh, but clearly they didn't really it might be the kind of thing like where they're oh. like you are technically our cousin's god father father yes but you're not really involved with their mm-hmm. day-to-day lives yeah. or their religious training or mm-hmm. anything like that. So it'd be kind of like that, where like if something happened to them, you'd be like, "Well, I guess I gotta do something now oh, because boy, I'm I their hit, I gotta hit the Bible, brush up." <laughs> I literally. Have no, to no, teach I mean them. like if one of them got like got attacked, oh, yeah, you'd have yeah. to somehow yeah. get justice for them. Well, then I would definitely go to Don Corleone. So maybe now I should start asking him to coffee. Not, never too so early to start to, those fosterings, those oh, relationships, no, boy. Although it's interesting, you should bring this up. I'm wondering if this, if if they, if Puzo and Coppola purposely had this in the story because it's pointing out that to Don, to the Don, until he gets the respect from Buonasera, like like that has to happen before anything else happens. Like he won't intercede, even something as terrible as his his wife's goddaughter being attacked. 
Right. Like Bonacera hasn't shown respect yet, so I can't intercede. Like that's how serious it is. So, but let's just say it was like uh, one of Sonny's kids. Mm-hmm. Do you think? Do you think would he wait until Sonny came to him and said, "Pop, we got to do something about this"? Or would no, he... I don't think so. Because it's a blood relation. Because it's blood relation. Because Sonny yeah. already respects his father. Yeah, that's that's obvious. Bonacera so. does not respect him. Yeah. He so, didn't even invite him over for coffee. Gosh, or that's some good coffee. Yeah. That, that ain't no instant stuff. <laughs> it's a good commercial. Or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That'd be great. Boy, I mean, I know the, the Godfather logo is, <laughs> makes him a lot of money, but Paramount's yeah. not thinking big here. <laughs> this coffee's delicious. Yeah. I'm going to have those guys kill for you. <laughs> yeah. them all, them split screen, shows them all sipping espresso. Yeah. While his, the guys <laughs> are getting turns, killed. Turns to the camera and smiles. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, um, another great scene. First, we see Marlon Brando, so that's that makes an impact. Uh, yeah, so the the, the minute ends with uh, Marlon Brando saying, uh, You found paradise in America, so mm-hmm. he totally understands why he might think I understand why you didn't come to me, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, yeah I guess so that's, we uh, still don't know how the Don's gonna react, and yeah. There's this. Is he required to because of the Sicilian law? It's his daughter's wedding day. Is how much can he say flat out no? Is he obligated to somewhat fulfill that request? Mm-hmm. I, I wonder don't know how exactly many uh, what the, the rule is. I wonder how many things he had to do. What who had to do? Like how long has Marlon Brando been in the office seeing oh. uh, people coming and asking him for favors? Well, in the mo- in the book, there are f- I think four people, four cases. There's Bonaceras, there's Nazarene, who we do see in a later scene. We'll talk uh-huh. about that. There's uh, Johnny Fontaine. Johnny Fontaine, and boy, there is, oh, there is another one that's not in the movie. Uh, there's a character named something Coppola, no uh, no relation, completely coincidence. Mm-hmm. And he asks the Don for financial support to open a pizzeria. Ah. Yes, and uh, he ends up giving him money. Oh, we do see. Do Nazarene. we see that in the movie? It might be in one of the deleted scenes. Nazarene is the guy who's Nazarene's the the, the baker. Yeah, who's who had that Italian guy come over during the yes, war. And we'll and talk then, about that. Okay, yeah, 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 there's yeah, definitely we'll stuff the, yeah. there. No, goes, this is a this is a fourth guy, which I'm pretty sure is not in the hmm, movie. Interesting. Yeah, for rule money. of thirds, that's the yeah, solid yeah. structure of a. Yeah. Well, we might as well point it out now because we're talking about it. When this this Mr. Coppola asks him for money, the Don grants it. Uh, he doesn't have the cash on him in the moment, so he asks Tom Hagen right there on the spot to borrow money. Tom lends him cash, and then the Don gives that cash to this Mr. Coppola. And uh, Puzo wrote that it was it was even more symbolic to Mr. Coppola that he that Don Corleone himself was taking on debt for the benefit of this friend of his right. who has come, yeah. come to show his respect. So it was, it was even more, more than just a gesture. Yeah, to but that's like showmanship, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's not like, it's not like you know, well, now i got to get a second job to pay off this yeah. pizza day. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Coppola's Tom getting... Hagen's busting my balls. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, Tom Hagen is just like 10-point vig on there, so. <laughs> that's true. So they Don't call Corleone has to end up working at, at the pizzeria oh, to work ironic. on that. <laughs> oh, ironic. He's, he's spinning dough to pay back the dough he lent him. Oh. Um, it's all connected. It is all connected. So, but I'm also, I'm surprised there's only four people. In the book, there may have been more. I mean, I'd be scared. Would you go and ask? Uh, yeah, but these are all guys who, like, work with him all the time and stuff. Yeah, but still, I mean, even, he's the head of the family. He's legendary. Also, you think you, it's you just have more, have it's more out of fear and respect that people aren't abusing him. Being yeah. like, hey, could you, could you give me 20000 well, Can you buy me a car or yeah. something like that? <laughs> yeah, because then you are, in a sense, you, you owe him back. Yeah. And I imagine the daughter's mm-hmm. wedding day stuff probably takes on like an added price. Mm. Oh, you said, so you think it's you're even more indebted to the Godfather yeah, if you ask on that day rather than any other day? Yeah, because not only are you asking him for a favor, but you're taking him away from a special event. Oh, my daughter's good. I only got one daughter, and these people keep calling me asking, and asking to kill him, kill her, yeah. give him money for pizza. <laughs> Well, later on, he does express frustration that he because he says, "Now yeah. let me go finally enjoy That's my true, daughter's wedding yeah. day." So, if you had to write in other characters yeah. that were asking for things, what would you have put in? 
Well, I guess the natural instinct is to go for like comedy and have it be all like, oh, a guy wants to, you know, like, uh, you know, like a free car or uh, it's a shame that uh, it's a shame that uh, the Turk didn't come by on that day, you know, the, to do the uh, the drug deal. Oh, that's right. He totally could have gotten that business deal done. But theoretically, everyone at the is everyone is a guest, right? Is Bonus Era a guest to the wedding? Yes. So everyone oh, there is so, so yeah. only people. So he wouldn't have invited the church to yeah. to the stars. But yeah, he doesn't even know him yet. Yeah, yeah. I guess everyone who's at the wedding, hmm, yeah, probably has shown respect. Yeah, except sur- for Bonacera. Maybe that's why he's there because he first has to show. Yeah, respect. Maybe. I'm surprised none of the other knowing. Um, we're kind of getting. Yeah, we'll save this for later because it has to do with the crime bosses being at the. Uh, oh, at, at the wedding. At the yeah. wedding. Yeah, there's a good scene later where you yeah. see them. I just hope I don't forget. Oh well. We got a lot of minutes to take care of. So you, me, Alex Robinson, 2017. If you were at the wedding, mm-hmm. what would you ask the Don for? What would you do? I would ask if I were at the wedding, if I, Alex Robinson in 2017, were at the Don's wedding, I would ask for, um, go ahead, go ahead and ask me. You've already shown me the proper respect. I would ask to, um, I would say that my, uh, I'm about to get kicked out of my apartment because I have a dog and the landlord is being a real jerk about it. Uh huh. So I would want him to intervene and make sure I'm not kicked out of my apartment. Hmm. I think I've dealt with this before, maybe 20, 30 <laughs> years before. Uh, Forget the, about it. Does your child like the dog? <laughs> That's okay. So, so, you, so you want to stay in your apartment oh. with the dog? Oh, no, no. You misunderstand me. I want to move up to a nicer apartment and have my old landlord killed. Oh, okay. Well, that's not justice. What do you mean? You're yeah, the you're, godfather. Your landlord hasn't killed you or a family oh, member. He's killing me with these bills. <laughs> Listen, you gotta take it up with your super. <laughs> super. <laughs> the, the Don's engaged in all the mid level, the mid management. People ask him, like, oh, Don Corleone, can you come fix my sink? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he puts it on his tool it's belt a, over know. his tuxedo. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta first learn how to do that. He has to his apprentice with one of his workers. <laughs> because he can't just subcontract it out he has to uh, he has to like do it himself although he doesn't he doesn't do all the other jobs himself he subcontracts those out <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> do you think when crime bosses have children and they have a girl baby girl yeah how soon after the birth or they learn about the gender do they think oh gosh on her wedding day i'm gonna have to fulfill all these requests Hmm. Because it sounds like it's quite a burden fixing sinks, upgrading apartments, <laughs> pizza ovens, pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're probably like, well, maybe she won't live to be marry age. <laughs> She'll die in the gang wars when we go to the mattresses. <laughs> so you would ask for a better apartment. Yeah. Okay. And free rent. And free rent. You can't oh. refuse. Well, you're gonna have to work that that off. What service can you provide provide me, Alex? I have a dog. Alessandro, that's your name in Italian. Oh, Alessandro, oh, I yeah. think. I don't speak Italian. What service will you provide me, Alex? Uh, you can come play with my dog. He's very cute. No, what service can you provide me? Well, I don't like dogs. I see you have a cat I work there. With you, dogs. you clearly like animals, so come on. You can't so, refuse, you said. You know what? When your daughter gets married, I'm going to come and <laughs> pester you and ask you for all kinds of junk <laughs> and annoying requests. And maybe that's what stops other people from doing it, is that they <laughs> know that eventually it's going to be like, ah. Yeah. That's why, that's why Bonus Era is so, uh, so like, cavalier about it, because he's like, oh, my daughter's face is all wrecked up and stuff. She's uh, never going to get married, so I'm not, now I got nothing to lose. I got nothing to worry about. I might yeah. as well just ask, ask away, right? Yeah. So, it's a rough world. Yeah, so it ends with uh, you saying you found paradise in America. Is that the very ending? That's the last line. line. I know there's more dialogue to come between oh, yeah. them, which oh, will yeah. be really yeah, interesting. There's a lot more uh, stuff. So um, yeah, so this is where you start to see the sort of the intro of the two paths because now we are formally introduced to the Godfather, mm-hmm. and he went a different path than Buenosera. So this is the beginning of those crossroads right. from the viewer's point of view, seeing yeah. 
how one went one way and the other went another way. There but were go. those paths really that different, Alex? Uh, is that a rhetorical question? I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not sure. So what do you... I guess uh, no. <laughs> uh, yes, they are different. Yeah. In Morally, ways, they're yeah. different. Mm-hmm. No, in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> are they really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, so what do you rate this uh, this particular minute? I will... Oh, boy. You see the dawn for the first time, although it's not a big... Yeah. It's not a dramatic moment, and it, like, nothing was decided. You but, see the dawn, and you see the dawn holding the cat, no, which it, is probably the most iconic that is image. in his tuxedo. In the, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, that is an iconic Do you think image. it's... I think it definitely influences our opinion of him. The first time you see him, he's in a tuxedo. Yeah, yeah granting favors yeah it's a position of power this book coppola writes over and over this this story is about power because like when you see his normal day-to-day clothes as you see later on in the movie it's just kind of like a cardigan and and you yeah. know he's very cat not a casual dresser he's yeah. business well, casual uh, you know when he gets sh- if you were to get shot you'd be want to dress comfortably too well no i mean before even before he, when he's having the meeting with the turk oh yeah in his, in his office yeah, that's true presumably yeah. if this had happened the next day Bonacero would have been in that in the Jenko olive oil true. office yeah and he would seem less majestic majestic I, I always thought that that Don Corleone would be in his tuxedo because of the iconic image yeah so he's going to fix the sink and he's <laughs> yeah. in well it's funny tuxedo. how you always see yeah. when it, whenever the godfather is showing you they show, show him in a tuxedo like yeah like he always went around in a tuxedo <laughs> like he's a stage magician or something <laughs> I'm gonna make your problems disappear <laughs> yeah. well I think Paramount that's their second most lucrative is image, the tuxedo is the uh, Don in the tuxedo mm. image holding the camera have you ever seen the movie The Freshman Yes, I saw it a, a long time ago, and I, it, what a great surprise it was. I've never seen it, oh, so well, you, I we will, will have uh, to watch it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe a freshman minute down the road. Uh-huh, or at least a bonus episode for bonus Godfather. Episode. Yeah, so uh, I was I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. And that was before I had gotten into The Godfather, and I probably even saw The Godfather all the way through, so I'm not sure what to... It would be interesting watching it now. Yeah. Well, um, we'll give it a shot. Anyway, I'm going to give this one. I'm going to go ahead and give this one the full five stars. Five stars, just because so it couldn't have gotten better. Couldn't have been better. Well, I mean, wow, it's up there with the yeah. the, the the tuxedo and the cat, and you have a yeah. little bit of the faith in America. Some of the the yeah the you know freshman stoner conversations about business versus mm-hmm. the government, and it's the first time you see Brando. This is the first time you and see you do Brando. See, do you see? I guess it was the previous minute when he leaned in and whispered. Yeah. Or maybe there was a little bit of this minute because I think that's a, an important moment too. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's yeah. the minute okay. started with him whispering. I, I, I was going to go a strong four, but I think you point out a lot of good attributes of right. this minute. Let's go five, full five. Yeah. How about your analysis? How about your rating of our analysis of the minute? Um, I thought it was okay. I thought it was good. It was good. Um, you know, I had some information. I have a lot of notes here, which is mm-hmm. always a good sign. The stuff about the cats mm-hmm. and speculating about the goddaughter i'm gonna give this four i think we give it four we give on it a four. scale of 15 oh the scale, scale 15 then three then three okay <laughs> i agree it's probably about i think it was a four a four it was, it was strong yeah uh oh wait are we going with 15 <laughs> let's if go it, let's stick with five well i was just gonna say i would just multiply my response then and make oh, it 12 go, yeah. so i just okay. multiply it by three <laughs> So, I, go, I go 12 and a half 12 and a half like price is right where if you go a little bit higher oh, yeah, than the last yeah. guy you're <laughs> yeah it's true um well all right then that wraps up minute five that's minute we, we have five minutes down how many are there oh, total 130 there? i don't have my okay figures we're making in progress we've seen yeah. two characters mm-hmm. we're, we're getting there do you want to plug your band I do want to plug my band. I want to plug a few things. Okay. Uh, Alex and I made a movie several years ago. It's online. It's called Robot Killer. Go to robotkiller.com. Check it out. And I do play in a local cover band here in Portland, Oregon. We are called The Cliffhangers. Go to Facebook and search for The Cliffhangers. The Cliffhangers. We don't play outside of Oregon, though. So you would yeah. Not yet. We're working on it. You guys should totally work on it. Uh, the Godfather theme. A rocked out oh. Godfather theme. Well, I do have, I do have, I've had a, a vision for many years, and I'm okay if someone steals this vision. I'd rather see it full realized than not. I want to play a concert with a, just an awesome band and just only do TV theme songs. Mm. So an hour and a half, just a bunch of segues, 
straight through on segways no 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 transit segway song into song into oh song. okay yeah. like a medley yeah the whole segway thing is a that's another show a okay. uh, medley yes yeah, that's a gimmick yeah <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I would like to do that at some point. I the, would you, that be great? Would you come see? I totally would. What what's off the top of your head? Mm-hmm. What's what TV thongs this theme song? Look you at what's play? happened to me. I didn't get the role of Luke Skywalker. So that's oh, Cheers. That, no, that's Grace American Hero. <laughs> we'd probably do Cheers. We'd have to have a keyboard player. We'd do Cheers, Greatest American Hero. We do uh, instrumentals too, like Sanford and Son, yeah. Barney Miller. I'm a big fan of the 60s and 70s themes. Well, I that was wanna... the golden age of the theme songs. Yeah, yeah. a lot of great songs. Taxi is a great one. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Taxi's theme song. The show or the song? Uh, I've never really gotten into the show, but the song, that oh, flute. Really? so like i don't know there's something about it hokey i'm not as big a fan of that first part but after that oh when it starts rocking out yeah and an electric piano comes in i think it's like the mash theme song there's something like down about like that's like that was sort of the 70s feel yeah most of the 70s themes were not upbeat, positive. Oh, that's not true stuff. at all. Really? The love boat. Da, da, da. <laughs> that's true. Oh, that wasn't cheesy or hokey. Oh, no, cheesy and hokey, yeah. but it wasn't a downer the way like a taxi. And, so uh, the flute was a downer in taxi. Totally. Did you like taxi? It's funny I never got into it. I never did either, but I'm thinking I may have been too young. I think now I, I think I was too young, and now I think it's too, it's too old. Oh, interesting. Like the it might when you were watching it because I've, I've stumbled across a couple of episodes and reruns and it it definitely has the rhythm of an old school laugh tracky sitcom yeah you know so mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if there's laugh track I'm sure it was before a live studio audience but it still has that same yeah. rhythm to it yeah. which I'm uh-huh. not as much of a fan of so do you think if you shut off the laugh track it would be better like Mash no it's not necessarily the laughing it's just more like the it it affects the pacing mm-hmm. and the kind mm-hmm. of like yeah just kind of slows things down. Which is fitting because it's called Taxi. Those of you who have like ever gotten a cab so. in Manhattan know it's slow and seriously should have called that show Traffic. No, well there was already a band called Traffic. Oh, yeah, they go across town. Those guys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so what would you like to plug? Uh, any, I do any upcoming uh, shows, book signings? No, no upcoming no? book signings. I'm working on a new book. I'm a cartoonist in my other job. You can st- go to comicbookalex.com. And there you'll find links to all my books and mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, check that out. And Alex does amazing acting performances in Robot Killer. Robotkiller.com. Oh, that was uh, a long time ago. That was a very long time ago. But long it stands time. up. I watched it yeah. a little while ago. Yeah. Definitely stands up. All right, then. So um, on behalf of myself and my co-host, Andy Robinson, I will say, leave the gun, take the Godfather Minutes.